Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the audio commentary Space. for the pilot episode Seems of Futurama. This is Matt Groening, Greg Vanzo, co-supervising animator, director, John DiMaggio, voice of Bender and other characters, David Cohen, executive producer, head writer, and, and Rich Moore, uh, co-supervising yeah. director and co-director of this episode right. with Greg. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, and Matt and I wrote the episode, I'll see. This is a tough thing to get the to get the show off the ground, and uh, pilots in general, I think, probably are pretty tough for everybody. But to do a show where you're setting up a story that takes place a thousand years in the future, and what we tried to do is we tried to lay in a lot of little secrets in this episode that we would pay off later. Should we tell some of them or just leave them? Maybe we'll just point them out and let people figure them out for themselves. Let's just say okay. secret. <laughs> There's a cool one coming up in just a few minutes. What's great about this, uh, and I uh, tip of the hat to Rough Draft, is how good this looks. The first episode is is uh, you know the show's evolved a little bit, but it doesn't you know it doesn't look like a different show. Rough Draft is our animation studio, by the way. Whoa, right, that's us. Pizza delivery for uh, icy That's my parents' home address, four oh five. Different street, but that's where the number came from. <laughs> <laughs> wow! So you can, Everything is of I significance. Uh, <laughs> uh, millennium. This idea came to me in the shower. I remember thinking about it in the shower one morning. Now, the fact that they're doing the countdown for the New Year's all around the world is a little bit of a stretch, but... The idea that they're in different time zones, yeah, it kind of Secret. Secret. later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to pay off in a few years from now. Matt, I remember an early drawing you did that looked just like this. Your conception for this scene was in your mind early on. And, and I have that drawing. This is inspired, <laughs> uh, you know, by the time machine. This is great. <laughs> Is that another secret why uh, why that building didn't get destroyed? Uh, sure. Yeah, another <laughs> secret that you don't know. It's so secret that he, that there's not one person on Earth who knows the answer. <laughs> the script changed a lot, really a lot, from early versions to this, but we finally decided that it was kind of thematically important to there end. We wanted to end this cold opening at the moment Fry was in the future. It seemed like that was the big change in his life. And uh, we decided this was the place to start the main title. It's the first, that's the first shot of New New York, correct? Yeah, that, and that was the first 3D shot that, that we animated. Yeah. So, so. Oh, really? So that was mm -hmm. sort of an experiment, whether mm -hmm. you could do that or not. And here is the, the introduction to the theme song. I, I think the funkiest by far on the air of any other oh, show, period. Well, th this opening sequence, I mean, when we saw it for the first time fully animated, we thought, oh, this is too fast. We can't, you can't even see what's going on. It's too crazy. It was now great. it's like, bring it on. Yeah, yeah. directed by uh, Mike Smith. Yeah, he great did a animator. fantastic job. Great. Welcome to the world of tomorrow! In one of the early drafts, when Fry first woke up, he was immediately dragged to an auction where uh, he was bought by the professor for spare organs. <laughs> Have a nice future. Cool, just like in Star Trek. Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon. Another uh, kind of goal that... Uh, Matt and I had early on was we were going to have all this cool technology like they have in Star Trek, Star Wars, but it was going to malfunction like technology always does. So, you know, we're going to show those sliding doors, but they're going to hit you in the head. I think this is the first time we see Leela. Yes. <laughs> now, Matt, you had another, another thing uh, Matt had early on was the idea that he wanted this one-eyed, beautiful character. Where did that come from? Uh... No, no, I just thought it would be really cool to do a, a sexy babe, um, you know, a science fiction style uh, heroine, and uh, but give her one eye and see if we could still make her comely and attractive. I'm sure this must be very upsetting for you. There, uh, she is because I've I've seen her on the internet. Mm -hmm. And anyway, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes, my friend. <laughs> 
So Rich and Greg, are there are there difficulties in drawing a one-eyed character? What what problems did that cause? Well, at first we thought it was going to be difficult, but now we've gotten used to it. It's pretty easy to do, right, Rich? Yeah, it's. So it's you use not the hair to diffi- cheat it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I learned cheats with the hair and the. Again, expressions like a frown brow is difficult, but once we get down the it's expression, like a sad eye and yeah. a frown eye are a little tricky. Yeah, hopefully she never gets a front haircut or. <laughs> <laughs> there was another long scene here in the pilot, actually, which was even partially animated before mm. before we ha- decided to rewrite it, where this complicated device was hooked up to Fry's head, where they, when they were studying him, and we saw all these scenes from his past, including his birth and him going off to college at guidance Coney Island. Counselor. His guidance counselor. That's right. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff. <laughs> we, had, uh, th- we were very overambitious at the beginning, and we really had probably about two hours of material for the pilot and realized we could not possibly use it all. Was this the highest rated debut in Fox history? Am I mistaken in saying that? Uh, I think it was. I don't know. I can't remember. It, we, it did really well. And much of the surprise of Fox, because they were very alarmed by this, by this show, by this episode. Because David and I went in and pitched this thing, and and, uh, and uh, everybody got really excited, and, and they ordered 13 episodes on the spot. And they said, well, let's show us what you got. And all we had was a, was some notes for this, uh, for this script. And uh, they couldn't understand, because we said that we didn't want the future to be dark and drippy like uh, Blade Runner. But we didn't want it to be bland and boring like the Jetsons, and they loved the Jetsons. They said, "Oh, this is the greatest," you know. And uh, they couldn't understand how the future could be fun with, uh, you know, a one-eyed uh, alien woman and uh, a, a crazy and the suicide booth and a suicide booth. They said, "Why are people lined up to kill themselves on New Year's <laughs> Eve if this is so great?" Hmm. The, the decision we came to basically was that. If we wanted to be able to do any kind of commentary on life today, then the future had to have good elements and bad elements. It couldn't be a utopia or a total dystopia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, the um, uh, either way, a utopia or a complete dystopia would be uh, boring after a while. Yeah, that uh, that line was originally uh, JFK Jr. Airport. That's right. That's but right. but unfortunately. It actually aired once with that guy uh, saying he wanted to go to JFK Jr. Airport, and then there was the tragedy with JFK Jr. in the plane crash. So we decided that because it both There's mentioned him and reference. an airport, we should change it. But. Is there only Simpsons reference? Right? What was it? Bl- Blinky the Three-Eyed Fish. Oh, that's there right. That that was a joke that went around and around. How him coming out of the tube and that he was going to hit a mattress or something at the end because we didn't want to kill him yeah yeah it was lots of different ways this is the introduction of bender hey yeah. there i there's me or is that some kind of cheesy new year's costume bite my shiny metal ass now that's the first words but you know what i auditioned for when i auditioned for the show i auditioned and i auditioned for the professor as well and I use that voice as the professor, and I use that voice, and I also use, I use Earl's voice for Bender. I so I did a couple different things. It was actually a, a producer we worked with uh, named Jason Grode who came up with the idea that you should re-audition with your professor voice as Bender, as Bender. and that's what we went with. It was very hard to decide what a robot should sound like. We auditioned dozens, every scores. robot I don't in know Hollywood. How many <laughs> <laughs> David Duchovny was around. around. <laughs> Kevin Costner. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did because you know wh- how does the robot sound? You I mean if if you if you're doing comedy, you don't want the the robot to sound like this, which most people did. There was another early version of the script in which Fry uh, woke up and went straight to Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty for processing. And uh, he fell out of the head of the Statue of Liberty, and the Statue of Liberty moved and caught him. <laughs> These are all the things you missed, viewers. Those weapons are great. Uh, lousy, stinking rip-off. We gotta bring those well, back. I didn't have anything else for today. Let's go get drunk. The coin-op suicide booth was inspired by a Donald Duck cartoon in which Donald Duck went to a museum of the future and he did all these uh, uh, coin-op devices that... Uh, uh, injured him. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
possible, Lila. You must find this Mr. Fry and install his chip. Look, he's just a nobody who doesn't want to be a delivery boy. I'd really rather not force it on him. Well, that's your job. I have to admit, we've kind of uh, let the idea of these chips fall by the wayside over the years, and people kind of take the jobs they want, and we dodge this issue. But it is an, it's an interesting idea. No, they have chips. They have the chips. <laughs> <laughs> we, we just don't talk about it. We don't show it. We don't show it or talk about it. They've come back once or twice, but turned out not to be that pivotal in our Why universe. Robot need to drink? Old Fortran is a chip on Old English. And look at that. That's a, a critical thing in the background there, that sign for Slurm. Rosetta Stone. Yeah. Exactly. And that's a real belch, by the way. What does that say, drink? It says, it says drink. Slurm. It's the, the, the alien language letters say D-R-I-N-K, drink, slurm. Elsewhere in this episode, we showed a banner all in English that said drink, slurm. So that was our clue to people how to translate those five letters, D-R-I-N-K. Based on that, they translated all of the alien uh, language within a couple hours of this being on the air. We thought it would be more challenging than that, but the people were pretty on the ball. That's why we later introduced a second alien language, which is much harder to translate, and uh, people finally got it, but only after... Did they get it? Yeah, they got it. It took a few months, though. Wow. We may have to do a third one that's computationally difficult to translate. But I don't want people thinking we're robosexuals. So if anyone the master of the bender belch, by the way. No, we worked hard on that alien <laughs> alphabet too. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, all it is is all you have to do is go is say is say a. Just go a when you're belching, and it's a bender belch. Just go a, and it'll and it'll be a bender belch. That's it. Uh oh. <laughs> that, and now now there's be there's you know, kids bender belching all over. And yes, we know the wristbands on the wrong arm. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah. She wears it on but her right arm? It's, yeah. It's the kind of thing you can get away with pretty easily. Yeah, but those people on the internet, they uh they're brutal. Welcome yep. to the head museum. I mean, ah, it was on, the head it was museum. on purpose. Hey, hey, do the thing. <laughs> Oh, having Leonard Nimoy come in and do this, uh, actually in this very studio, mm -hmm. uh, this room. yeah, was uh, that was a real treat. It felt like a, an endorsement that you know, hey, we can't go wrong now. That was a true thrill for me. <laughs> Hot dog on a stick. Costume. Yeah. Matt, any specific place that the heads and jars came from? The idea. That's a standard kind science a fiction standard. cliche. Yay! And there's there's Matt's yeah. appearance in the series. I'm sorry, Fry, but I have to install your career chip. Yeah, well, if you're sorry, then why are you doing it? It's my job. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Watch it! I remember Matt just taking glee right. in the idea that so many years down the line, we could still make a living making fun of Richard Nixon. <laughs> I was so mad at Nixon, you know, as a kid growing up. He's just such a jerk. You know, to be able to, to th if I could have known back then that, you know, in 1999, I would still get to make fun of him. Oh, what it made. It cheered me up. Oh, come on. He's just a poor kid from the stupid ages. Keep your big nose out of this, eyeball. No one makes Actually, the nose, nose thing, that was a big, that was, a, it was hard to get the designers to draw her nose that big. Because they thought it was hideous mm -hmm. that it was that I always that, wanted drugs. that, car that cartoon <laughs> heroines must have yeah. little tiny noses, totally if any at all. How yeah. did how did the characters' designs differ from your original uh, sketches, Matt? I know Bender had uh, antennas that were like ears early on. Bender's, except for yeah, he had little ear like ear antennas, but that's pretty close. Bender's pretty close. Fry's been definitely been cleaned up, but I have this theory about uh, animation design that what makes memorable characters are characters that you can uh, identify in silhouette. And this, uh, you look at the characters on uh, The Simpsons and in my comic strip Life in Hell. If you put them in silhouette, they're still very easily identifiable. And and I tried to do the same thing on uh, Futurama as well. So that's why Fry has those two fork things in his hair and. And there's a little antenna, and Leela has her ponytail. You make a persuasive argument, Fry. Come on, Bender. You can do it. Can't. I can't. 
Oh, and Fry's wearing uh, James Dean's uh, outfit in uh, Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah. Yeah. What were the animation difficulties in uh, making Bender speak? He's the only robot, uh, for the most part, in our show that has lip sync. We tried doing a, a test where his mouth just lit up, you know, when he talked to the syllables of, of the dialogue. Just didn't look any good, or what? Less expressive for a major character, I think, mm-hmm. to not have lip sync. Let me ask you something. Now, now you, you said it was a, it, you know, it's James, Dean, James Dean's outfit from Rebel Without a Cause. It's kind of funny because we had the premiere at the Griffith Park Observatory. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, you know, it was, you know, on the, on, the, on the planetarium screen, which was really an amazing experience. But, you know, I mean, like it was art little tribute to Laser Zeppelin or something like that, I guess. But, <laughs> but uh, that's kind of interesting that you say that. Little yeah. thing. And then that night I visited Sal Minio's grave. <laughs> <laughs> Back up above there was some alien graffiti. That was our test to see if they had translated the language. It said, Venusians go home. And sure enough, they were able to translate it in one airing. Wow. Old New York. Back a lot of memories. Keep them to yourself, Pops. You see this drawing here of Bender's angry eyes? One of our producers, uh, Claudia De La Roca, and I used to just laugh. We were just laughing uproariously when we watched this animation when it first came in. There's something so funny about him for no reason so having mad. that evil, <laughs> evil. Wait, there's someone you know. I always love that shot. I'm miserable enough already. Look, I know it's not much consolation. But I understand how you feel. No, you don't. I've got no home, no family. No friends. My whole world is gone. <laughs> the, the master of the lean-in. <laughs> yes. So alone. I understand. I'm the only one-eyed alien on this whole planet. Reveal. A lot of storyboard artists will, will ask on a bender in line when they're, when they're boarding a show, like, is this line, should this be a lean-in joke? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, just, just a regular joke. <laughs> obviously do, so I give up. If you really think I should be a delivery boy, I'll do it. In some very early conception of the series, Fry wasn't even a delivery boy. He was a night watchman at the cryogenic Shit. lab at one very early point. What are you point. doing? Quitting. Why? Because I've always wanted to. We went through a lot of agony to figure out the, how we were going to get this show off the ground, yeah. you know, figure out what the premise was and that he's a delivery boy in the future what and is the matter with what, what the whole series is about. We also considered making him captain of the ship at one point instead of Leela, but uh, it seemed like it would be more fun to have him be an underdog. Wasn't he in an early, early version a soldier or something, that, like an army man? That, I remember drawings that... That you had of You're him. thinking of G.I. Joe. <laughs> no, I, yeah, you may be right. I, you know what? I, I can't remember. I'll have to get out the notes. I can't remember. That'll be in the book, in the coffee table <laughs> yeah. book. Ah, and this is the reveal of Hello, Professor's Lord first Welcome uh, to appearance. A special That's really Dick Clark. Actually, there's a whole bunch of stuff with Dick Clark that we just could not use because we didn't have enough time to get it on the air, and it was oh, very right, funny. The, Shana, Shana, heads the heads of Shana. Shana. Dick Clark was a really good sport, and he came in and he read the script, and like you like said, he had a lot more lines to read, and he said, I have no idea what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I get it, but I take your word for it. I love this machine that that seems to be the only use that it has is for people to... It's a nephew stick, detector. <laughs> yeah, stick fingers in and detect a relationship. With a little light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, if you compare uh, the professor's voice here to subsequent episodes and seasons, it really changed a lot. This is the introduction of the ship? Yep, first appearance of the ship. If you notice, the ship has an overbite, like all other characters. One of the interesting things about the ship and other parts of the show is that uh, certain things like that are done in 3D computer graphics, but then blended in with the 2D, which is not easy to do and still make it look like oh, you're trying. Big joke, big joke, big, joke, yeah. big secret. <laughs> <laughs> secret phrase comes to mind. The Fox didn't like that joke either, did they? I doubt it. <laughs> if I had to guess. Didn't they use it in the promo? I'll get us out of here. Oh, you reminded me of one other funny thing from Fox. Uh, from the very beginning when Fry's in the probulator, we had a note from the Fox censor, uh, and I quote verbatim, standard caution on the probulator. <laughs> I mean, we never figured out what that meant, and apparently though they'd seen the probulator in many other episodes of other series, and they had some standard comment. <laughs> Give him an ass.
gas for the laser. <laughs> Prepare for liftoff. Ten. By, by the way, Earl is me in the morning. <laughs> for any ladies who have the DVD that are watching. You notice there's a little inside, <laughs> a little inside joke there that uh, in the future, the French language is gone and they just speak English in France. That's a cool shot. Yeah. That whole sequence, I think, came out really good. I remember seeing it and hoping, God, I I hope we can do this on a weekly basis. Is that a speaker right there on the floor? Yes. Without a cover on it? Yeah, without a grill on it. That was a little improv by Billy West there. Yes. We left yes. in. Oh, it's really? That poor sons of life. Wanted. Thanks for the offer, Professor. But we don't have the proper career chips. Oh, that won't be a problem. Katie Seagal. I saved the chips from my Just felt like saying it. <laughs> I love that label. This is awesome. Are we going to fly through space fighting monsters and teaching alien women to love? If by that you mean transporting cargo, then yes. It's a little home business I started to fund my research. Cool. What's my job going to be? Wow, it really has changed. It's changed a lot. I was just going to say. Oh, because it gets you. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be a delivery By the way, Billy West and I do dueling professors. We do David Bowie. Right. <laughs> the professor boy. sings... The professor sings David Bowie. Oh, ground control the Major Tom. <laughs> so, Matt, what do you think now, looking back at the pilot? How does it uh, hold up? I th you know, we did a good job. I mean, everybody did. It's great voices, great writing, and uh, great music. And Christine did a great, great and great animation. Incredible animation. animation. The, the, the Unlike anything. I think we just changed. I, gotta tell, I just got to talk to you about uh, Curiosity Company, the uh, production company for this thing. I, I use a film of my father's called The Study in Wet, which he made in 1964 using uh, that, that little boop, 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 or his uh, water drop sounds. And it's a tribute to my dad. That's a reflection of a surfboard. Oh, oh wow. Oh. Secret. That's Excellent. a secret. Who came up with the 30th Century Fox? We suggested it, and Fox initially didn't want to do it because it cost a lot to make that uh, Fox didn't logo. want to do it at all, so David and I paid for that logo out of our own pocket. And, uh, yeah, and then they they later they decided they liked it. It kind of embarrassed them that we did that, so <laughs> they paid us back. But originally we, we believed in this show so much. That we uh, that we paid the fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think the pilot holds up quite well. I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy to say I hadn't seen it for a while, and it, it does it does uh, hold up pretty well. I think. Excellent. I have no regrets. <laughs> <laughs>